Hello, so this video is looking at uh, summarizing quantitative variables. Uh, when we discussed quantitative variables in the past, we had described either interval uh, values or ratio values uh, and cross-sectional data and time series data. So what we have specifically here, uh, this is cross-sectional data. Uh, here it says specifically just for the year 2013. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ratio data. Uh, I've got CO2 emissions in thousands of tons. Now, the first step to, to describing this information graphically is, of course, to start with your axes, your y and your x-axes. Now, I may, I may be a little bit uh, picky. I don't know uh, if other instructors are the same way, but as far as I'm concerned, if, if you have a diagram that, you know, you've got all of these bars and looks something like this, and that's all pretty... Uh, as that stands right now, that's meaningless. There's no value at all in just uh, a, a picture, okay? It is absolutely imperative that you have all the proper labels uh, and where appropriate a legend, uh, if, if it's helpful, uh, to describe exactly what it is you're drawing and what, you know, what, what does this bar mean? What does it correspond to, okay? So in this exercise, where it's a bar graph showing CO2 emissions, so that's what I'll put on my y-axis. This is CO2 emissions. And it's absolutely important that you also include the units or the scale of measurement. So this is in uh, thousands of tons. Okay, and so now that tells me exactly what is it you're measuring and, and how big is your ruler, you know, how, how are you measuring it. On the x-axis, uh, I'm going to include that information for Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. So this is the specific country. And then I'll label those as Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. Okay. Now, when we're putting the data onto the bar graph, I always find it's easier to start with the largest value first. And then each subsequent value, you can sort of scale it uh, according to that largest value. So for example, you know, the US here is, is our largest at 5,335,000 uh, 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 tons of, of CO2 emissions. So I'll just make that as large as my y-axis will permit. So there's my value for the US. and not essential, but it's sometimes helpful if you want to also include the data point uh, as a label, uh, just to make it that much more clear. And then uh, moving on, we add our other. So now I can scale the size of each of these uh, bars relative to the size of the, the, the largest value, in this case US. So, so Mexico was uh, 456,000, so less than a tenth of the size of the US. So let me just say, you know, maybe that's something like this. Uh, 456,000. And then Canada is a little bit more uh, at 565,000. So I'll just draw that a little larger than Mexico, but not as big as the US. And here we go, 565. Okay, so there's our bar graph. Uh, if I wanted to have a legend as well, here I would uh, use the orange. This is Canada. Uh, my blue, this was for Mexico. And finally the red is for the US. Oops. <laughs> now, the legend almost replaces my x-axis labels. So here I've got both labels on the x-axis and I've got a legend. Probably don't need both, uh, but you can pick one or, or include both if, if you like. Uh, in any case, here's our bar graph. It makes a nice clear picture uh, that we can compare total levels of CO2 emissions uh, across North American countries. Okay, the next one that we'll do, uh, just scroll down the page here, very similar, uh, but we're just using a slight variant uh, of the data. Now we're going to look at uh, per capita CO2 emissions, per capita CO2 emissions 
for those uh, same three North American countries. So the reason I'm doing this, uh, not just because we need practice producing bar graphs, but also to show how it's important that you really interpret the data properly uh, and, and to see how, how the data might be manipulated uh, in a way to tell a story. Okay, if we look at our first bar graph here, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that people are going to look at this and their first reaction is going to be, wow, the U.S. is a heavy polluter. You know, there's so much more pollution relative to uh, Canada and Mexico. And, and that's a valid statement looking at this diagram. Um, but maybe there's other ways of looking at it because we know that the size of these countries, the size of their economies, uh, is significantly different. So here we'll take that into consideration and just show how by adjusting the data a little bit, it tells a bit of a different story. And, and this is something that's important to watch out for when you're looking at uh, other descriptive statistics put together by the media or you know on Facebook or wherever you might come across this. And just to be conscious of exactly what is the data showing and is there information that's omitted or you know other bits of information that might be relevant uh, to telling the story in a perhaps better or at least a different way. And so here we're going to do that um, by considering uh, per capita. So we're looking at population uh, as well as em total emissions. So again, I'm going to start off with my y and x axes. Here now, my y axis is this per capita emissions. So per capita, oops, per capita CO2 emissions. And now we're measured in tons. And along the x axis, again, this is still my individual country, so I'll write here Canada, uh, Mexico, and the US. Okay, now uh, we'll go through the exercises in the same way as we did before. We'll start with the largest value. So again, we see that the US is, is still the largest value, so I'll exhaust, I'll use up as much space as I have uh, on my y-axis for that largest value. So here, once again, a nice big tall bar for the US, and this is 16.5 tons per person, okay, we're per capita, so we're talking about per person. Uh, if we look at Mexico now, uh, Mexico here is 3.7, so still substantially less than the US. So let's, uh, I don't know, let's draw it somewhere down here, 3.7. Uh, so that so far looks pretty similar to our first picture. Uh, now if we look at Canada, well now this is quite a different story. Canada is 15.9, so it's not quite as much as the US, but it's pretty darn close now. Right, it's 15.9. Now again I could add, you know, a, a legend over here. I don't think I need to this time. Hopefully you got the point. Uh, in the first, the first part A here, but now we can see this is a similar data set. This tells one story, U.S. heavy polluter, my goodness, what are they doing? But when we take the size of their economy or the size of their population into consideration, Canada is uh, certainly no better um, and, and uh, a lot worse than what, than what this first picture uh, makes us appear. So here again, we've got a bar graph tells an interesting story, tells the story in a little different way than, than our first bar graph did, uh, but certainly uh, makes it easy for the reader, uh, whoever's looking at this, to look at that and say, wow, Canada and the US, practically the same as far as per capita emissions, uh, Mexico is, is substantially less. Okay, so uh, I hope that helps uh, produce bar graphs. Uh, thanks again for watching.